Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the plot. Well, we all wished for rain, didn't we? And guess what? We got it. Storm Hannah came over. She made her presence very well known. High winds, lots of rain. Uh, it's quite patchy rain, so I'm sure some of you have missed it altogether. I certainly got a good dose of it anyway, so I'm happy. The beds are back to looking a nice dark brown rather than that dusty, horrible colour that we had before. Uh, yeah, it's been a very dry April all in all, but hopefully yeah, that's going to compensate for it a little bit. Didn't do much for me water butts, but... Uh, Every little helps as they say. I think um, one of my main thoughts at the minute is getting ready for me brassicas. Obviously brassicas when you put them out everything wants to eat them. I think the main culprit probably being pigeons, rabbits, um, mice, basically anything. Anything. You like to eat the greens, they like to eat the greens so it's a competition of who gets them first. Um, I've been, in the past I've used sort of things like this netting here and that sort of thing propped up. It gets quite awkward when it comes to having to weed them constantly because um, you're constantly taking the meshing off and putting it back on and that. So what I've been thinking is at the back here I've got another, yeah, another greenhouse frame. Um, I know obviously I've already got one, two, three up this end. But um, I've actually, <laughs> yeah, that's number four. Sorry if that's making you a bit sick, spinning you around. That's number four. I've actually got number five still at home as well. Um, so what I was thinking is I'm going to join two together and where that black uh, sheeting is over there on the ground thinking about um, meshing the two greenhouse frames so that I have got like a big brassica house almost you know and that'll give me quite enough room to put in sort of you know probably ten each of like cabbages, broccoli, sprouts, kale, things like that so that's going to be one of my jobs I think don't know if I'll get that fully completed today it sounds like a bit of a mission I'll be honest with you but we can certainly get cracked on with it um, bit of rain, sorry I'm just going to flip you around, bit of rain as always has sparked all life into the bed so I've been round already, this time of year it's ever so important to keep your hoe moving, so um, yeah I've been round, I've hoed all the beds because all the, all the weeds started popping up, um, things like fat hen and that come up straight away, but it's quite uh, easily identifiable that one, so that little one here. Used to be grown as a food crop, I think, or a grain crop, and it absolutely proliferates, self seeds everywhere. So, all of the beds still looking fairly empty at this time, end of April. I'll just show you me uh, direct seeded. First row there, the beetroot, we've started to get signs of the beetroot coming through, they're quite obvious from uh, the purple speckling on the edge of the leaves and the stems. Oh, also fighting my ongoing battle with this stuff, the mare's tail, but that's another story. Little turnips have come up and then the radishes are well away as well. I'll leave them for a week or so and then start thinning out. Radishes shouldn't have too much trouble as they are. Underneath this little net here I've put in some uh, carrot seeds last week. Um, nothing really come up on those yet. And then again, anywhere that you start planting uh, you start struggling with the weeds because uh, it's not as easy. A nice big open area like this, you can just hoe the whole thing and not have to be too selective about it in a bed like this. Obviously you can hoe up and down your rows but then uh, you've got to get in between your plants as well so it takes just a little bit more effort. But who wants to talk about weeding, eh? That's not the fun part of the job, is it? It's just very important at this time of year. You've spent your whole uh, winter or however long you've been preparing, clearing your beds down. If you don't keep on top of them now, that's when the weeds will re-establish. And uh, yeah, just keep that hoe moving. Keep it sharp, keep it moving. Do a little, do it often. Sign of the times, we've had another allotment holder give up his plot just recently. Um, and on there, obviously you can see behind, he's left this massive walk through polycarbonate greenhouse. Now, I don't know if he's on about taking it with him, but um, I should try and get hold of him, because if he's not, that would be absolutely lovely, wouldn't it? One thing they have left behind and they said that I can uh, help myself to is all of these lovely pots as well. So uh, I don't know if they'd be quite big enough for a chilli plant. Sorry, there's a tram pulling up behind me. But um, yeah, quite possibly, so I might have a look at taking some of those. There's a load of old compost in there as well, which can go on my compost heap, which will be lovely. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, sign of the times really. It's uh, This is one half of the plot. That was one trap, so he gave up yes, last year quite uh, a nice little spot, he's left his shed behind as well, sheds go for ridiculous money, and then the second plot is this one, again one lovely big shed, another shed there, I do hope that somebody wants to come and take this plot over because it's a lovely one, 
and then around this corner here looking down over the plot you can see he's got all the beds down all the wood chip on the paths so yeah it's a real shame that they've abandoned it but I think a lot of people struggle especially when they've got uh, families and all the rest of it to actually uh, keep on top of it don't they so yeah it's a darn shame they've actually dug a pond down here as well I think once that gets overgrown that'll be a bit of a hazard it's not I don't think it's more of a well really thing must go down about six seven feet Woo. so yeah I've been having a good mooch around as well they've said that I can help myself to anything uh, that I fancy the look of I've already helped myself to a fair bit but um, yeah I don't think they're that strict on our side about people taking the rubbish away with them at the end um, certainly no fines in place or anything like that that I've ever seen so all of this will sit here until somebody else comes and takes over the plot there's a few little bits in there, there's like a, a little stove and you know, various knickknacks and what's it's. So, yeah. Even a little sign here that says garlic. I could have a little sign that says garlic on my plot. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a darn shame. We are... Uh, losing plot holders down here so for the future of the site it doesn't look good obviously the local council are going to be basing it on uh, viability and income because it's cost them a certain amount to maintain it I suppose and if they're not getting enough cash in to uh, justify it they might look at uh, you know getting rid of the land all we can do and the few plot holders that are down here giving it some is just uh, keep going hope that uh, that doesn't happen here's another lovely little plot as well which is uh, not had anybody on it. We've had a couple of chaps come down, but they've never had more than uh, a couple of weeks at it before they give up. Well, that's absolutely beautiful space. Look at that. Nice and private. Hedges either side. And then beautiful ground that's been left fallow for a couple of years. So yeah, it'll be full of weed seeds, but it'll be nice and fertile. It's an absolute crying shame. Makes somebody a perfect little allotment, this. And then I think, I think another reason why this particular allotment site is so neglected is uh, this is actually a plot. <laughs> Would you believe it? There's a hedgerow down there, and one where that line of trees is, and that was actually a plot. But now it's a good ten feet high in crap, uh, which is understandably from the council's point of view completely unjustifiable for clearing. You know, if they're going to make 50 quid a year off the rent on a plot. I mean, this, with the asbestos and other things in there, is going to cost some thousands to get rid of. That's a darn shame. But, uh, I think one thing is when, when certain people start dumping, other people just get on board, don't they? Start dumping straight away. Start uh, doing the same thing, rather. And then down this way, at the back end of the plot, the uh, allotment site, going towards the uh, vastly neglected end of it that's also another plot as well, you can see the remnants of the shed there so again people don't want to take on that kind of work plus with the overshadowing from the trees as well it's not an ideal site yes you can see not been used in years don't know about the other one down there, it's like a the big pile of rubbish is up at this side, it's sort of built up. So down the back there, there's actually a nice bit of land, but again, it's surrounded by mature trees. I don't know what sort of uh, growing you could get done down there. Make a cool little place to build a base though, wouldn't it? You ever do that as a kid? Go and build bases in the woods? I know I did. That's probably why I've got the bug for living outdoors. Whew. I'm just going to show you one more of the abandoned plots as well. This is not like a marketing video or anything like that, it's just a uh, sign of the times really, I suppose. This is uh, another one, this one was abandoned last year. And as you know, it doesn't take long for these places to fall into complete disrepair. So this has had a full year of weeds growing and all sorts. There's the old uh, chicken house in there. 
as they used to keep chickens on here. And then obviously the site's not been cleared down. They've just been allowed to leave all the rubbish. So again, I think this one actually drops all the way back. I don't know if you can see, but you've got a row of trees at the back there and it actually drops all the way back there. I know the people that had it last only used this end and that end's just uh, ferns and all sorts. There are a few mature fruit trees back there, but... Again, another darned shame, because it's a lovely bit of land. Albeit strewn with hazardous rubbish. So, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a pretty neglected uh, site altogether. Um, there is another one about two minutes up the road that does have water and that's in much better condition. I wonder why. Um, yeah, it's understandable. My first couple of years, the water collection was like a massive, massive issue for me. Um, I think when you have a hot, dry summer like you did last year, it can be really, really upsetting. You know, you've got choices. You either come down here with buckets and buckets of water in your car, or uh, you just sit and watch all of your plants crisp up and drop dead. So. That's why this year I was hoping to get some extra water storage, but uh, the weather has uh, decided otherwise. And then we come back onto my plot, which is like a little plot of heaven in the middle of all of that crud. Apart from that end, it's a bit cruddy. I doubt very much whether the camera will pick these up, but um, it's one of those days as well where the air is absolutely full with seeds. You know, the little uh, furry seed heads that uh, fly in on the wind. One has just landed next to me, probably can't even pick that up and see it. I'm my face in the way. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, just goes to show no matter what you do, you know, your garden's going to be constantly introduced with fresh seeds. Um, so, you know, weeding is always going to be a problem, um, even if you mulch, because the weeds will land on top of it, don't they? Um, so, yes, constant challenges. It's all good fun, though. I want to start getting the uh, first of my tomatoes potted up as well. It's, uh, it is a little bit early, um, obviously they're not frost hardy so any sort of cold weather will knock them right back, possibly kill them. But these plants have been in the greenhouse now for about 2-3 weeks and they are growing on fine so as long as I keep them indoors, I'm not planting anything outside yet, as long as I keep them indoors everything should be alright. I'm going to start some of these little pots here, I know they're quite small for a tomato but um, the tomatoes that I'm going to be putting in here are the mini bell, so it's a small bush tomato. Just create, um, makes these little uh, cherry tomatoes. You might have seen me grow them last year, they were beautiful. So I'm just going to put in four of those now. The plants that I've grown, they've come on quite well. They look like a nice, strong, sturdy little plant, so I'm just going to uh, go ahead and get these uh, potted up one into each of these pots. With a tomato you can plant them deeper than they are already, in fact sometimes that's a good thing because the root where you bury it will actually create more roots and make a stronger plant. So don't be too afraid about burying them deep, especially if you've got a tall lanky plant, get that thing right in the soil. Even if you have to go up to the seed leaves on it, it'll be fine. Now this tomato, the mini bell, is what's known as a determinate plant. You've got two types of, well you've got three types, but we'll talk about two. <laughs> you've got two types of tomato plants. Indeterminate, which are the long, tall ones that will keep growing and you have to pluck out um, all of the suckers and stake them up. Or you've got a determinate or a bush type, which is like this one. You don't have to do any pruning to it as it's growing, unless it starts to get a bit out of control. But um, it will just create a nice bush, um, small plant. So yeah, they're going to go in the greenhouse now and uh, hopefully we'll get some lovely tomatoes. Just <laughs> have a quick look at the sunflower challenge, hashtag for sunflower challenge now. They are the uh, titan sunflowers now, they're coming on quite nicely, but um, as you can see, starting to get a little bit floppy. Um, same with the Pikes Peak over here as well, so I'm just going to uh, 
put a little stake in those and try and tie them up a little bit. I think for now just one of these little barbecue type bamboo skewers will do the job. I'll just pop one of those in. That'll sit in there quite firm and I can just tie the plant off to it and just give it some uh, encouragement to be growing in the right direction. Help me get a nice straight tall sunflower. And there we have it, they're all staked in now, ready to grow on a little bit further until all chance of frost has passed. Sunflowers! Ooh. Oh my days, I can't even... Well, I've got dirt on my face. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I've got a bit of a dodgy tash. There's a bit of muck. Just having a bit of a uh, wrap up now. I can't believe how little I've got done, or I've done loads, but you know, at this time of year when you're just like working, working, working away, and it doesn't seem like you've done anything at the end of it because it's such a big place and there's so many jobs to do at this time of year. Um, jiggled around the greenhouses and everything like that just to make sure everything's got enough sun and it's got enough space to grow. Obviously the uh, little greenhouse now has got some tomatoes in it, um, so hopefully they'll be alright, unless we get anything ridiculous in the way of cold weather, I think we'll be okay on that one. Like I say, they've been standing up alright in the greenhouses for the last few weeks. Just uh, poke his heads into this one. Um, so, all of this side, that's all my flowers, um, apart from the sweet corn in the top corner there which has started to come through, as you can see they're all bending over because they were in the dark corner but I've removed those from there now. Uh, these are the chilies that I trimmed last week and as you can see, even though it seemed quite drastic at the time, they start to put on a lot of growth around the bases and they're going to really bush up quite nicely. So um, yes, that's uh, obviously worked out. Um, not, a, not a huge amount really to uh, report. Um, What's that kohlrabi there, which I've not grown before, but again that was in a dark corner, so I've moved that out because it was starting to go a bit laggy. Um, and then some Lola Rosso, which um, I want to try and keep them in those cells if I can, and maybe just harvest them straight out of there, I don't know if that will work. No sign out of the butternuts, but the uh, the rest of the sunflowers are starting to poke through. You see a bit of soil disturbance there where it's pushing its way up. Just repotted uh, some of these flowers here, they're looking a bit miserable with me. Um, so obviously there is some root damage when you do remove them. And I brought the strawberries through into here as well and they're the, uh, what are they called, the massive massive beef steak tomatoes. Um, so hopefully we'll get something out of there. A couple of courgettes here that I've potted on and they've been uh, just put into uh, a slightly sunnier spot as well. And then at the back there's some uh, onions and leeks that I still need to do something with. I haven't quite gotten around to it, nothing much else to report in any of these other pots. Potted up my little mini bell tomatoes as well, that's the pots that they'll grow up in. Uh, like I say, they're just a determinate, so they'll sort of just form a little bush. Ever so tasty. Um, and that's about it for this one. Outside I've had a good uh, good go around with me hoe, pulled out all the mare's tail and any bind weeds that's shooting up. So, uh, yeah, that seems to be coming along alright, it's just the amount of time. I think you know diggers might be onto something. And then through into the second greenhouse. That's the rest of the tomato plants down there, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of those. Like I say, I might, I'll chuck some of them outside, I think. I've earthed up the uh, pink fir potatoes, just because um, They'd start to poke the heads up, so I've put another probably what three, four inches of soil on there, and I'll continue to do that until the bags are full. The gutter peas, the gutter peas are all uh, shooting away now. They're looking quite nice. It'll only be a week or so, and they'll be going out, I should imagine. Um, so otherwise, they're just going to become a bit of a tangled mess. I have sown them quite densely there, actually. I don't know if I've gone too far with those, but um, they all seem to be healthy enough. They're all nice and green. Uh, what have we got here? The Atlantic Giant, the giant pumpkin, has actually just started to break the surface now, so that's nice. And that's a petty pan squash. And uh, some more sunflowers there, little Leo Pacino Gold. And then the uh, sunflowers that are up as well, they've all been staked and tied. So hopefully we shall uh, be getting some decent ones there. That's the cucumbers and the gherkins, obviously, which are cucumbers, but littler. Um, more sunflowers, 
more flowers down there as well. I went a bit, like I say, flower crazy. A few of them probably need pricking out. Uh, they need potting on as well, but it's not a job that I've got around to. I think I've been, uh, well I know I have been overwatering a lot of things. I think you sort of kill them with kindness sometimes because these are, uh, they're going very green on the top as you can see and they're not, uh, they're not forming the healthiest of plants just because of that. And that's uh, that's a symptom of quite a few things actually. I've had a few seeds rot off before they've germinated. Uh, cabbages in there, they look lovely. They'll be going out fairly soon and then the dahlias as well I don't know what to do next with those whether I'll leave them to grow on for a bit probably uh, Lavender's had a haircut like I uh, like I said that I was going to because uh, I want them to form nice little bushes before I put those out fairly soon and the ends that I've took off as well I've put some of them in uh, rooting hormone and uh, potted those out as well that's my bustle sprouts that's a mixture of sprouts and cabbage there they've gone slightly leggy because they were at the bottom I say leggy, you know, they've kind of stretched out and leaning over, so hopefully a bit more sunlight will help those out. Oh dear. So yeah, I came down at, what, 10 o'clock this morning, something like that, and it's now just after 6 at night, so I've had 8 hours here. It just don't feel like it, there's not enough hours in the day. My old brassica cage idea, that's one for next week, because then brassicas want to go out soon, so... I need to have somewhere to put them. Um, if I try and stick them out without any protection, I've done it before, the pigeons will have them overnight. It's just not worth the risk. It's not worth it. Put all the effort into growing them and just be eaten by pigeons. Everything's just uh, bursting into life and we're all struggling, clinging on, trying to, uh, trying to make it through, trying to keep on top of it, really. Constant battle between man and nature, or woman and nature, or people and nature, let's just say. So, once again, from the plot, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, hope to see you soon. Um, I'll probably be down next week with another video. Um, yeah, everybody, have a good week and uh, take care.